Hey, what's happening YouTube? Today I want to talk about this new Sigma 70 to 200 DG DN OS sport lens from Sigma, obviously. It's a lens that I have honestly been looking forward to for quite a few years. I picked up my Sony a7S III, I think it was back in 2020, 2020? Yes, 2020. Love that camera and I, I picked up this, the Sigma 24 to 70 2.8 and I've been wanting to get this 70 to 200 for a long time. This is actually not mine. This is a loaner from Sigma. Um, they, 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 loaned, they loaned it out to me. God, I can't talk right now, but they loaned it out to me um, to put it through the paces um, for wildlife fi for filmmaking. So this, this, this re review is completely unbiased. They're not paying me anything for it. This is just strictly my opinion. So take it for what it's worth. But um, I, I did go out into the field recently to an area called Whitewater Draw in Southern Arizona and I use this lens to look at about, it was about 6,000 sandhill cranes that come here during the winter. It was pretty incredible, remarkable. To just see, I've never actually seen sandhill cranes before. And so that was pretty cool to, to be able to be among them. But anyways, this, this review is about how the lens performed, especially when all of those uh, cranes get into flight, how it did. I wanted to choose a, a somewhat bigger subject because obviously I can't get all the way into 600 like I do with my 60 to 600. But at 200, you can still get some pretty amazing shots. So there's a link here in the video description as well to see the, the little cinematic piece I produced on the Sandhill Crane. So if you want to look at that, it was all shot with this 70 to 200. Not a single shot from any other lens or anything else. It's all from this lens and from the Sony a7S III. So go ahead and take a look at that too. It's pretty cool. I guarantee you should definitely check it out. It's, you'll, you'll enjoy it. I guarantee it. So, but anyways, yeah, without further ado, let's get into this review. This is my my name is Alan Lacey, and I'm a wildlife filmmaker, cameraman, and producer. Adventure with me as I explore the amazing world of nature and show you what it's like filming the wild. All right, so first things first about the quality and build. Holding it in my hands, it feels super solid. I really like the way this feels. It has really good weight to it. It's actually fairly light. I believe it's like just under three pounds, like just 2.9 some odd uh, pounds or something like that. I think the technical, it's like 1,345 grams. And it's weather sealed, they claim. One of the, the really good features I like about it is it's, it's all internal zoom. So as you zoom through the 70 to 200 range, all the mechanisms inside, all the lenses move internally, which is really nice because that means you can use it on a gimbal and it really compacts the size of the lens. So it's not telescoping, telescoping out as you uh, zoom like the 60 to 600 does. A couple other features about the lens. I love, again, they have all their focus buttons, autofocus, manual focus, whether you can focus near or far, your optical stabilization, your custom modes uh, one and two, whether you're panning or um, if you have some fast moving subjects and then whether or not you can program some custom buttons as well. And another thing about this lens that I really love, honestly, it's really awesome. Um, they integrated an aperture ring as well. So right now it's on automatic, but you can actually disengage or unlock it. And now this aperture ring, you can actually uh, adjust it and you can feel each stop. I really love this, especially for video. This is absolutely amazing. I wish they, did, I wish a lot of all lenses did this, to be honest. Having manual control over it instead of having to get into the camera and spin the wheel, there's just something tactile I just love about feeling it on the lens itself. If you don't like the clicks, there's another button here you can click on. Completely makes, takes it away. Now it's smooth. So you get a smooth transition all the way from F2.8 all the way to 22. So really good feature. I'll show you that real quick. So you can see right here, if I can get to focus the Sony, here we go. So this is what I'm talking about. You have the aperture ring that, twi that uh, you can use different ones. So you can automatic, or you can move it through the entire range from F22, obviously down to 28. It's a fantastic lens. And this just comes from the lock. You can turn that on or off, put it back on automatic. If you'd like to use the camera features, now you got, now it, now it can't move. And on this side, obviously you have all your buttons. Again, so all the way through, just like all the other lenses. But then at the very bottom of here is where you can actually remove that click sound um, and make it just smooth for the aperture. But all around this lens is just phenomenal. Really, there's not anything really bad I'd want to say about it. Overall, generally speaking, it's just a fantastic lens. And kind of just some more back to construction. Obviously the 
tripod collar. It's a little smaller in form function, which is nice. Although sometimes I do, this might be one of the negatives, but I will get into it later, but I do like to sometimes hold it by the collar when I'm taking pictures. So it's, it's a little less grip. It's not that big of a deal, but it does rotate all the way around the lens as well. So you can move it out of the way, which I do when I do my filming, because I actually like to put my rig together um, using rail systems and such, and sometimes the collar can get in the way. Your zoom feature on the lens, it's uh, non-linear, it's fly-by-wire is what I call it. So the quicker you move through your uh, zoom, the faster or the more distance it'll travel. So you can do a quick throw on your, on your ring racking focus, and it'll quickly move across your depth of field. It'll quickly change focal lengths, obviously because you're doing it fast, but the distance that you are focusing from near to far is greater than if you travel that same exact distance on the focus, doing it slow. So if you go really fast and you move it three inches, it's gonna go a long distance. But if you move that same three inches really, really slow, you're gonna barely move your focal plane just a little ways in front. It just is a lot slower, more precise which is kind of nice in some features actually. So I never really ran into an issue with this lens like I did with the 60 to 600 in the field. Often in the 60 to 600 when I was moving through, I would get really frustrated because I'd want to move further because obviously there's probably, you know, you're, you're really zoomed in at 600 so you want to move through that plane a lot. Well, on this lens, it didn't, I didn't really seem to bother with it. It was, it worked great for me the entire time. Looking at the mount here, it's the Sony E-mount. And um, I, I don't know if this is just the way it is, but I know on my 60 to 600, it's like a little rubber flange that kind of comes around for weather sealing, a little, adds a little more protection, maybe just because it's a bigger lens, but this one doesn't have it. I know my 24 to 70 doesn't have it either, so some of the smaller lenses just don't have that little rubber flange that comes and helps protect sealant around when you mount the camera, but that's kind of being nitpicky. A couple more uh, programmable custom buttons around the lens, but overall, this is a very sturdy lens and um, I uh, had a lot of fun working with it. Oh, and another thing about this lens is they've integrated their new HLA, I think it's like High Response Linear Actuator System for their autofocus, which is, if I understand correctly, there's, in, in most autofocus systems, it moves, like the motor moves one aspect of the way the lenses can, they converge to help with your focus, right? So with this, it actually, they've got a, a dual system, like a dual floating HLA. So both ends now of the lens system move. So each one has to move in a shorter distance instead of it all moving from one end to focus, which is greater travel. It can do it from both ends now, reduces the amount of travel, which ultimately reduces the time, which increases your autofocus accuracy and the speed at which it does that. Really quite ingenious, and it works tremendously well in the field. Sigma's done a great job of incorporating that in this lens, which is why I think they held off on releasing this lens for so long like they did. The 60 to 600 also has, the new 6600 has that HLA, um, high response linear actuator system as well and it's, it's phenomenal there too. Really enjoyed working it with working with it in this lens. And it also has a, a new algorithm for their um, optical stabilization. I believe there's like 7.5 stops on the wide end of stabilization and 5.5 on the tele on the 200 end, which really on pans, and it was quite windy a little bit there when I was filming, and it just cuts through that wind. It, it just locks it in place. Uh, it's amazing. Most of my filming is done on a tripod, so I don't handhold a lot. But even on tripods on a windy day, it shakes. Did not notice that too much with this. So that system, the algorithm is working extremely well. Um, it really helped cut down all of that shake and makes the pans, everything you're doing, much, much more smooth. All right, and now for the, as far as the things, the pros and cons, the pros, the things I like about this lens, obviously I like, I like the fact that it has the internal zoom. The fact that everything can happen right here within this distance and it's not telescoping out, changing the, the weight on the rig itself because on my 6600, whenever I zoom in, the weight shifts to the front because there's more length on it. So now you have to readjust your rig so that it can properly balance. With this, it's just, it's beautiful. I like having it sitting there. Now obviously it does, some of the weight does shift a little bit with the way the lenses move inside the system, but overall, generally speaking, it's not dramatic like it is on the 6600. So I love that. I love the fact that it's all internal. And then also getting into another a huge feature I talked about just a little bit ago that I love about this lens is that aperture ring. To be able to go manually through through all of my f-stop, my iris and everything, 2.8 to 22, to 22 
I love having that on the lens itself to move through. It makes it feel like a proper film lens, to be honest, and it works just fantastically. I used it quite a bit, actually. Instead of having to go into the camera and get my hand in there and find the button to do it, it's just so simple to write on the lens. It's just, mm. really, like I said, all lenses should incorporate that because it really, really comes in handy for video. Other things I love about this lens is obviously the autofocus system. That new HLA, the dual HLA autofocus system is just spectacular to be honest. It's so fast, it's super sharp, it, right on the subject, right on target, and it keeps focus. You can move through pretty much any plane. Uh, There's so many birds that were tracking that a couple times when they launched uh, up into the air, several thousand of them and this lens just performed remarkably. I noticed a couple times when I took it off of autofocus into manual focus, it works pretty well too when doing manual. Obviously it comes to operator error. If you do something, if you mess up that way. One of the tricky things I noticed though in that space is when I had a higher aperture, let's say like a, I think it was around F8 a couple times just for landscapes and stuff. And then the birds would go crazy and do some things, the cranes would, because I use focus peaking a lot. So sometimes the focus peaking, it would look like things were in focus, but then when I would actually focus it manually and believe I was in focus, it wouldn't be. So that's just because of the depth of field of this lens. So a little more getting used to that and it would probably fix that and it would be no problem. That's more like I say operator error than I think the lens. But when I put it in autofocus mode, nails it every time. It's pretty impressive. It's remarkable these lenses now these days, like, you can't replace having an actual camera operator be able to do and pull focus and all that stuff, but really it's impressive <laughs> what the autofocus systems can do. Again, optical stabilization, another thing I loved about the lens, just makes my work look super amazing. I mean, it, no matter how like steady and sturdy you are, wind can still create shake, and uh, it just cuts through it so impressively. So optical stabilization on this lens, it's truly fantastic. One last thing about the autofocus, I, I did hear the autofocus system, so if, if audio is an important thing for you and you're capturing audio on camera or, or nearby the camera, it may pick up the autofocus, the sounds of all the motors and everything and the gear or whatever's inside in the me internal mechanisms. So you might hear that a little bit, but it is fairly quiet. It is pretty quiet. You're not going to, it's not gonna pick it up too much. Um, and for most of the work I do, it doesn't even bother me because honestly, I, add a lot of sound in after the fact, I record it and add the sound after the fact because especially if you're feeling slow-mo, there is no sound half the time. But that is something if it is important to you just to keep in mind. All right, kind of getting the image quality, the image quality in this, the, little, the, the footage that I reviewed so far, it is spectacular. It, uh, it's very sharp all the way through the entire range from to, from the 70 to 200. Love having that depth of field, but when you go all the way out to the edges, it's still sharp out there. I'm impressed. As well as obviously in the center of frame, it's super sharp at both 70 and 200 all the way through the focal range or the uh, zoom range. It's, I, again, I, mean, I just, it just blows me away. I've, I've seen a lot of reviews on this lens and everybody's saying the same thing. It's like, it's giving the Sony a run for its money. Uh, I've never shot on the Sony 7200. Um, it is a lens I've been interested in. However, now that there's this out here, I'm, I've been looking for this for a while or waiting for this for a while. Um, Sigma's probably gonna get my money on this. I'm, it's gonna happen. It's a, it's, it's a good lens. I think last but not least for wildlife in particular, because this is f2.8 and you can get to 200, this is a spectacular lens to take out into the field in low light conditions. And paired with the Sony a7S III, which is a low light king, that combo is, is just incredible. I was actually out at night with this combination. I was, I think, almost a complete hour after sunset. I mean, almost completely dark. I mean, there was a little bit of twilight left and I had this, I had the, the lens I think set for, it was like 50, basically 50,000 ISO or 56,000 ISO, whatever it is on the, that's about as high as I take it on the Sony a7S III. Definitely was in that dual ISO range uh, for Sony. It's like, I, I did, if I go up to 64, it just doesn't work. So it was like 50. Still pretty clean, a little bit, no, a little bit of noise. I was impressed <laughs> at f2.8 at 200. I can see detail and the great horned owl. And it was, I, you could barely see it with the naked eye. And yet on this, it blows my mind. So for the capabilities of wildlife in low light situations, 
Like if you're out in the jungle, you're in rainforest, tropic areas where there's a lot of canopy cover and you're not, you, you need something with good light. Like this combination is impressive. It is incredibly impressive. So I highly recommend for wildlife photography. And obviously for wildlife, they're up early in low light. They go to, they, and they get up early in the evening, right, right when it's getting dark, when things are just happening. This combination is spectacular, especially if you're right in on the action. So I cannot, <laughs> I cannot say so, too many good, like any, any really any, say any bad things. I can only say good things about this lens. It's really impressive. Now, if there are going to be any kind of cons, I would say for this, hard to find something that I don't like. I'm just basically being picky about it now. Lens caps on Sigmas. I've never really liked the Sigma lens caps and they're using the same system. It always feels, I don't know, for me, it always feels like I'm gonna scratch the lens element whenever I try to put these things on. And it's kind of that way with really any lens system, but I often take it off when I'm filming in the field and I put on my um, base camp solar, uh, Polar Pro matte box system, which completely eliminates that problem. So especially it has ND filters, which I like which is great on this lens. You kind of need that if you're gonna film in daylight because at f2.8, you can stop down like f8, but even still, it's pretty bright. So having ND filters is kind of a necessity. And I can have a link in the description if you're interested in what it is. It's the Polar, Bro Polar Pro Basecamp ND system, variable ND system, which I love. One thing that I, I do, it's really not a big thing, but I do like on the 60 to 600, as you're zooming through the zoom from 70 to 200, on the 60 to 600, you can feel these little stops at each one of the distances here, 70, 100, etc. You could you could actually lock it. You could you could get to you know 100 millimeters, lock it. You can do 135, lock it. And this you can't. So you kind of just have to stick it there and basically ballpark it, which is pretty accurate still, but. Um, it doesn't lock in position. So if you like to have it locked in position, set it there. If it gets bumped or something, it might move a little bit off, but um, that's the only kind of like really honestly the bigger negative aspect about this lens. Otherwise, it's just, it's spectacular. I think I mentioned it also, another negative is no uh, rubber flange that helps for weather seal like they have on the 60 to 600, but really it's not a big deal because this is a smaller lens, it's less weight, there's less probably play occurring between the lens and camera body. So therefore you might not need as much protection there. And really another another drawback for me, I mean, is the fact that, that there is no teleconverters yet for E-mount from Sigma. Um, that, yeah, I mean, right now I still have to go through the MC11 adapter to use my one, four and two teleconverters for the Canon mount for EF. Nothing yet, for, I'm sure they're working on it. So Sigma, if you're watching, please get that out soon. Because I would have loved to have paired this with one of the, uh, whether it's a 1.4 or 2, or whatever you guys are working on, just to, because uh, obviously it's gonna take a little light out, so you're not gonna work with 2.8, but if you're working with, you know, 5.6 or something like that, if it's a, if, if we're using the, the 2 tut 2x converter, just to see what that capability is and how it works together paired with the Sony system. Would love to would love to give that a try. So that's a drawback for me too. But really, <laughs> that's just being nitpicky. This lens is by far one of the best lenses I've worked with. Love it. It's going to become part of my arsenal again. I wish I could keep it. Got to send it back to Sigma. However, tomorrow actually, um, as I'm putting this review together tonight, so it's going to be sad to see it go. I've had it for a couple of weeks here, just giving it a, a run through. But uh, yeah, it's going to definitely become part of my arsenal. Be picking that up. Probably tomorrow as I ship this, I'll probably gonna hit that buy button. So again, Sigma didn't pay me to do this review. It's all my own personal opinions and I'll be buying it myself um, out of my own money. So love this lens. I can't, like I say, I, I highly recommend if you're a wildlife photographer, wildlife filmmaker, filmmaker in general, this is a great lens to have. It's the price point. You can't go wrong. It's like around 1500, 1400 bucks or something like that. Can't remember the exact price. Um, I'll put the price in the description here, which is significantly less than a lot of the other ones like this on the market, and it's just as good, if not better, in a lot of ways. Definitely recommend getting this lens and adding it to your arsenal as well, if, especially if you shoot in mirrorless. And um, like on Sony's, I think they also have it for the L mount as well, if you're using that, Leica. So definitely one of the best lenses I've worked with. All right, so in conclusion, um, this lens overall is superb, very well built, extremely sturdy. It's very sharp. The image quality is super sharp. I am 
just I am impressed with it. Um, autofocus has been amazing. The optical stabilization is superb. For wildlife filmmaking, like I said, this camera or this lens and camera combination is spectacular, especially for low light. Um, you really can't go wrong with that combination. Hope this review helps you out in your decision whether or not you're interested in purchasing this lens. Like I say, this has been, this is, if you're wildlife filmmaking, to me it's a must have. I, like, I'm gonna be picking it up, I'm gonna be buying it, and it's very worth it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. Like it, give it that thumbs up, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Um, it helps me out. Um, there'll be more wildlife content coming out down the road. It's been kind of a slow year for me getting a nonprofit up and running. A uh, new one that I've had is called Real Earth Films. It's all about telling real stories about the wild, so I've been pretty focused on that. But do expect some more videos coming out soon, so stay tuned. More to come.